Our people will fear Nana and pain. Me this. Nana ask me this. Nana ask me this. Oh. This is one situation that will compel compassion in any willing heart, and the governor responds accordingly. One of the strategies we are going to use in rebuilding um, is not to issue out contracts, uh, but to do rebuilding through communities. Uh, we'll discuss with the traditional council that they will be the rebuilding through the leadership of the communities so they can go about their normal um, activities, especially the issue of fishing. We are also looking into the deeper issues. Why did this happen? Why is it reoccurring? The one term destruction may have happened in ours, but the sad reality is that members of this community will have to wait for a few more days before the entire area is rebuilt, just as promised by the governor. When we come back after the break on News Track, environmentalists talk about the growing genetically engineered crops. Do join us again. Investigating, exposing, uncovering, reporting, hard hitting interviews. Sunrise Daily, only on China's television. You see, life has just got easier. You stay connected to China's TV, where news and innovations are shaping our world. Simply log on to China's TV.com to get the breaking news. Browse the homepage according to what matters to you. Tap on the extended coverage of business, sports, politics, lifestyle, infotech, entertainment, health, world news, and lots more. Click on the live link and see the news in real time. Do you want to watch the latest video of the day? It's just a click away. Friend us on Facebook, YouTube, follow us on Twitter, Google+. Plus. Participate in Channel's TV poll and share your comments. It's a website you can talk to. Your voice will be heard. ChannelsTV.com. The news at your fingertips. Welcome back. And remember, all our top stories and other programs are on our website. It's ChannelsTV.com and on YouTube.com forward slash channels web. If you're on the go, visit us at m.channelstv.com to view us live on an iPad, an iPhone, or a BlackBerry. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android and Nokia 920 devices from their respective stores. There's been a lot of talk recently about how genetically engineered crops can help feed the world and that they can help agriculture in a climate-affected world. But are these promises real or just hype? A Greenpeace says that genetic engineering does not feed the world. That is because 99.5% of farmers around the world do not grow genetically engineered crops. Meanwhile, there are reports that genetically modified foods will start selling here in Nigeria by the year 2015. Our correspondent Ayola Kasim has been looking into the benefits of this technology and now reports. We know that our world is changing and so is everything in it. That includes what we eat. In many ways, the food we eat today tastes different from how it did about 20 years ago, thanks to changes in technology. And the technology we have today has gone beyond it being applied to only the machineries used in planting. Today, the seeds have also been genetically engineered. It has been said that the crops have contributed to food security and sustainability by increasing world crop production valued at $98.2 billion between 1996 and 2011. South Africa is said to have increased its biotech area by a record 0.6 million hectares to reach 2.9 million hectares. Sudan joined South Africa, Burkina Faso and Egypt to bring the total number of African biotech countries commercializing biotech crops to four. cannot be the last in everything. Burkina Faso has cultivated 183,000 hectares under BT cotton. We are competing with Burkina Faso on the global market. Their cost of production is going down. Their farmers are held there. 
doing cotton, while our farmers continue to apply massive amount of pesticides. So far, advocates of GM and the biotech multinationals have succeeded in convincing a growing number of African leaders that the advantages of GM foods outweigh the disadvantages. The meats of GMOs include that they are higher yielding, are more nutritious and require less herbicides and pesticides. Another myth that is often peddled is that they are climate smart and can flourish in adverse weather conditions. Scientists independent from the biotech industry have shown through careful research that GMOs are not higher yielding than natural and conventional varieties. And if you go to a country like Uganda, right, they have a deliberate government policy to promote organic agriculture. They've got hundreds of thousands of farmers in the organic sector and they are making three times the price on the international markets for things like pineapples. So, you know, maybe organic can't feed the world, but maybe in some places it can. It has been seen that although the crops are often engineered to withstand herbicides produced by the same companies that produce the seeds, the weeds grow to resist the herbicides and farmers are forced to keep raising the concentration of the herbicides, thus compounding the resulting harm to biodiversity of the areas affected. The ones engineered to keep pests have ended up sometimes killing unintended organisms. Some American farmers are already counting their costs on the impact of the genetically engineered herbicide-tolerant crops. If I had the opportunity to, to grow non-genetically modified crops again, like we had 10 years or so ago, that's the technology that we would go back to, the old technology, which is no technology at all. The faith in nature and, and the faith in plant breeders to be able to select plants for their, for their best attributes so that they're the most productive. Advocates of GM foods nonetheless insist that the adoption of GMO technology remains the best option of boosting food production in Nigeria in line with current global practices. As I said earlier on the issue of the flood, it's all science and you have to look at facts, not what everybody uh, actually says. And I think that um, what is needed is not another country telling Nigeria what Nigeria needs. It's sci Nigerian scientists, Nigerian people, Nigerian customers and consumers determining what they need. According to Greenpeace, 10 corporations control nearly 70% of the world's seed market. This corporate control of agriculture means farmers have less choice. Why many might not see the danger of a technology that increases food production? African leaders and scientists are advised to be cautious about wholesale buying into an agricultural scheme that puts the fate of the entire continent and the larger world in the hands of a few mega corporations. Ayola Kasim reporting. The Lagos State government lost about 4 billion naira in the last six years in its tourism sector. The Commissioner for Tourism and Intergovernmental Affairs, Oladisun Holloway, says the amount represents revenue that would have accrued to the state from hotel licensing, grading and other functions since 2007. Our next report looks at the ruling of the Supreme Court, which empowers states to regulate the activities of hotels as well as other implications of the ruling. Cases that has kept the court busy from September 2010 have been the quest to answer the question of who should control hotels, restaurants and other tourism facilities in different states. Finally, on July 19, 2013, the Supreme Court made her pronouncement. Lagos State, as well as other states of the Federation, have been authorized to regulate the activities of tourism facilities located in their geographical jurisdiction. The court validated the hotel licensing law of Lagos State as amended. The court validated the uh, hotel occupancy and restaurant consumption tax law of Lagos State. And the court invalidated those sections of the Nigerian Tourism Development Corporation Act, which encroached into state jurisdiction. From this understanding, the state government has decided to pay more attention to consumption tax. Although the view of Hotel and Personal Services Employer Association of Nigeria is different. Lagos State Government passed another law called the consumption tax, as you call it. In the law, they excluded hotel and restaurant and other business from the application of sales tax. And then they make that consumption tax to look as if it is 
an independent tax different from six tax. So hotel and personal services employer association, which I'm the president, filed an action at federal court. And uh, we got an order of the court that no. And they got state government appeal to court of appeal that 